Shalom, shalom. Good morning, good morning, South Africa. Praise God. It is the 25th of October. A privilege and thank you that I can share this time with you. Salamat siang to all my Indonesian friends. Yes, this morning I had the privilege to teach the grade fives again this morning. And uh, yeah, just a privilege. But good morning, good morning. Um, I just want to encourage you also for today's word. I believe that, you know, people are going through some difficult stuff. But uh, maybe this word also this morning can uplift you. Maybe this word also this morning can have an impact in your life. Understanding why things happen in your life. I think the biggest problem, whenever we go through stuff, it's like, why? Why does things happen to me? Why it happened a certain way? And maybe today I can just give some insight. Pastor Tolly, goeiemorgen, good morning. Uh, Lydia, goeiemorgen, good morning. Everybody, I think Ina also, you're on. Pastor Marius, praise the year you landed, you back in South African, South Africa on South African soil. I think you guys are really tired. I'm so glad. Thank God that you are safe. Yes, Pastor Marius, Doc Marius is back in South Africa ready for the things that God want him to do. Amen. Yes, Jack, we are more. Good morning, good morning. Uh, let's pray and we start this morning. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning for the privilege just to share the word of God. May your grace and your mercy just come upon us and Father, we just honor you. I just pray for the body of Christ today, Lord, that there will come one unity, one spirit, one mind, Forgive us, Father, that we are so divided. We have so many, our own perceptions, our own opinions. And please forgive us that we are so opinionated regarding certain things. And, and we use many times social media as a platform to draw uh, more division than rather solutions. And, uh, Father, let us have wisdom. Let us truly have wisdom. We are not here to break each other down. We are not here to step upon each other, but we are here to love one another. And it's just sad to see how people within the body truly can cut each other up with their mouth, with their actions. And Please forgive us, Lord. Let us just make room for people, Lord. Let us just make room so much more for the people within the body of Christ. Let us have the wisdom to understand much more the things we are going through. I just pray this morning that you will touch us, Lord, changing the atmosphere and be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, my darling wife. So this morning, I want to speak about your word is being tested. You know, it can be the thing that God has placed in your in your heart. Let's call it, good morning, Barbara. It can be your calling. Let's call it that, your anointing. It can also, we can call it a dream, but let's call it a calling. Uh, uh, maybe you have a prophetic word. Maybe God spoke to you yourself. Maybe through the word you got the revelation, but this is God's plan for my life. And I just want to say this morning, but that word will be tested. God will test even the things being spoken to your life and what you experience itself. And, and one thing that sometimes happens, that the way your word will be tested is by being imprisoned by something for obedience. So whatever imprisonment you find yourself now, the main purpose, Pastor Peter Guillemore, the main purpose of being imprisoned is actually for obedience. And then so many times when we find ourselves being imprisoned, it can be many things. It can be sickness. It can be poverty. It can be relationship. It can even by our own mind, it can be something in your past. It can even something God allows that you are physically in a prison or in a mental prison where things just don't work out. You know, and then whenever we find ourselves, we ask this question, what did 
we wrong to end up in such a mess many times we look at where we find ourselves and we have this question how did it happen it's possible to find ourselves in prison because of disobedience and rebellion yes sometimes our choices can bring us into a place of imprisonment where you are being isolated in such cases we are not so much prisoners of the Lord as we are prisoners of our own wrong choices it can be in marriage the wrong choice you've not listened to God and now you married and you find yourself in this abusive relationship it become an imprisonment and many times the things is not actually being allowed by God or God is not the source that actually brought you into that but even when you do find yourself in prison and that's one thing I want to encourage the people that find themselves in a place because they did not listen because of various reasons that was wrong you know if you look at Samson yet God chose to use Samson even at the end of his life so God's plan for you will not change but when your heart changes God can do the things that you were still called or the word in your heart. On the other hand, we might find ourselves in prison without having done anything wrong. If you search your heart before God and you cannot come up with any reason why you're in prison, you may very well be a prisoner of the Lord. It's a prison of obedience. If we, if we read the book of Jeremiah, I mean, that's what happened to this prophet. He was a prisoner of obedience. He was faithful to deliver the words. How many people, Marno Huyamora, are just faithful serving God? And you find yourself in a situation as being imprisoned by a something, you know, uh, 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 and, and, and then how did it happen? So Jeremiah was faithful to deliver God's word, faithful, and yet he ended up in prison. But God knew that Jeremiah was addressing people who were themselves going to be taken captive by, by the Babylonians. So people are more often to receive from someone who has shared the pain. So many times what we are going through in that imprisoned, let's call it season, becomes your testimony and the working sphere after that in people's lives. Because if you can relate to people, Sometimes you have a bigger understanding of what people really feel. You know, it's easy to say, I know what you feel. If you've not walked in that path, your words is only that what you think how it could be. But not really experiencing that. And sometimes when you've gone through that and you say to people, I know what you feel because I was there. I know the loneliness. I know the calling and seeking God and the heavens is just closed. I know feeling lonely, being separated from God, I, being separated from people, whatever the choices. Amen. I say sometimes God in prison is servant in a prison of obedience that I have a platform to speak into the lives of people, especially in their disobedience. I mean... When we look at the life of Joseph, I mean, he could have thought, but I didn't do anything to deserve that. Maybe I'm speaking today to someone that you find yourself in a season that you don't understand. Maybe your business. Maybe people said God has called you as a king financially, but the reality is nothing worked. It's like money is just flowing through you, but there's no substantial. You want to do so much for the kingdom of God, you have these dreams, but it's not happening. You know, many people regarding ministry, they want to be part or they want to come into ministry and it's just like it's not happening. Then this happened, then this happened, then this happened. You find yourself in a season where just nothing work out. This is like you have no favor from God. It's like no door open in the season it's supposed to be. You just move from the one closed door to the next closed door with a pure heart to serve God. And then it's like, God, what did I do to deserve that? Well, one thing, if it's been God placing you in that condition or imprisonment, it's to teach obedience. 
I mean, can you imagine what Joseph experienced being sold by his brothers, coming into Potiphar's house, coming into the prison? How? How come I'm in the beginning of my life? But yet he felt a prisoner. I say the first response of God's prisoner is to feel like God has actually treated you unfairly. Whenever you cannot connect the dots, and you, you, you cannot understand there's nothing that you truly did to, to deserve this condition or season that you find yourself as in prison. Well, when you feel unfairly treated, just know one thing. God has positioned you in a place of obedience, preparing you for the dreams to come into fulfillment. The fact is you're not in a prison because of something you've done wrong, but because of something right you've done. The position being right position in season for God to do a great thing in your life. You've asked God to lift you to a higher place. You've asked God to increase your fruitfulness. And what is God's answer of your prayer? In Joseph and Jeremiah, they went to, to prison. They, they, they find themselves in a place of confinement but even in joseph's case god did not deal with joseph according to his righteousness but according to god's righteousness and i know god wants to speak to someone this morning you know what i'm talking about you find yourself in a condition for a season that you just don't understand you experience the reality of being bound in chains being bound and it's like, whatever you try, you just cannot get out. And this morning, my word is, is your word that God has placed or given you is being tested. And the first thing God tests through imprisonment is obedience amidst your condition that you find yourself. Are you still uh, obedient even amidst in the change that you find yourself? Amen. Genesis 39, 21, it says, showed God the Lord for it says the Lord showed him mercy in prison to Joseph which means God dealt with him not according to his perfect responses but according to his own goodness I mean we do not understand God can you imagine you do good but yet you find yourself being in prison that's just the way God prepares us that's just the way God tests the word in your life I want you to have another angle of the things you are experiencing. So many times we have expectation how things should work out. God, I have this dream. I want to go to nations. I want to bring the gospel. And suddenly all finances dry up. Suddenly there's no measure of anything that, can, that, that, that you can go with. And then you feel, can I ask people? You know, just like, no, no, no. You find yourself and you can, God. But can you not understand my heart, my calling? God, I want to do something. Maybe you said, God, I really want to help people in counseling. And the next moment, your own marriage falling apart. How can it happen? Why? The word or the dream or the calling will be tested. And one of the testing is you will, God, in some instances, will imprison you. But the imprison will be to prepare you, you know, and you will be tested in your obedience. Amen. But God was merciful to Joseph and delivered him from prison. That's the definition of mercy. God doesn't deal with us according to our level of perfection, but according to His loving grace and redemptive plan for our lives. It's not what we do good that will bring us out of prison. It's His mercy and His redemptive plan when we be obedient, that we will get out, out of that jail, get out of that prison, get a breakthrough and whatever. We want God to deal with us according to with who He is, which is why David cried from his emotional pain. You know, when he was in this emotional prison, revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake, for your righteousness sake, bring my soul out of trouble. Psalm 143 verse 11. God, for your name's sake, just bring me out of this. For your righteousness, bring my soul out of this prison, out of that trouble. You know, even David called forth for that. You see, we need to be sensitive. We seek release, but 
You know, we seek release not simply for our own personal relief, but in order that God's reputation might be promoted through the earth. I want to read to you Psalm 105. I just want to read some of the scriptures, you know, uh, uh, from verse 16 to 22. Listen what it says, Psalm 105, verse 16, about Joseph. So God decreed a famine on Canaan, Canaan, uh, Canaan land, cutting off their food supply. God decreed a famine because God is busy preparing a man in prison. God, sometimes we also, God, decree a spiritual famine in your life. It's like you sit in church, but nothing substantial. When you read the Bible, it's like nothing substantial. It's like you felt famine, whatever, there's a lack of word in your life. There's a lack of the presence of God. There's just this famine you experience. It can be natural or it can be spiritual. But the main thing is when God imprisons you to test your obedience, but also in preparation to test the word that's been put in your heart, in your soul, it's basically in preparation. So let's read the, first, the next verse, verse 17. Now listen. So God decreed a famine upon the land, Canaan, putting off their food supply. But, hallelujah, whatever in prison, whatever famine you find yourself, but he had already sent a man ahead of his people to Egypt. God is preparing you in your imprisonment for some people so that once you get out of prison, your word will be full, will be with the, with the spirit and the power and the fire of God. And it says, it was Joseph who was sold as a slave. He was sold as a slave with many dreams, but he found himself in a place of imprisonment. Verse 18, his feet were bruised by strong shackles. God didn't make it easy. Even God brought him for a in the future in his life. God didn't make he was in shackles. That bruise. Listen. Imprisonment is not a nice place to be. You will feel the pain. You will feel the. If you're in a, in a spiritual prison. And there's famine. You will feel the loneliness. The Basically. The, where am I? My life is going. What is my spiritual life coming to? It says that his feet were bruised by strong shackles and his soul was held by iron. His soul could not prosper. It was held by iron. He could not be the man he wanted to be, the young man in the best years of his life. But God imprisoned him, spirit, soul, mind and body actually, but preparing the dream that was in his heart. That dream, when he was 17 years old, was tested. His obedience was tested in prison. Listen to verse 19. God's promise to Joseph purged his character until it was time for his dream to come through. Listen, I want to speak to someone. You are going through this difficulty. You feel this preaching is for you this morning, this message. Listen what it said. God promised to Joseph purge his character until it was time. It's only for a time. It says it was time for his dream. Until it was time for his dreams to come true. Until the purging of your character will only last. Until you are, if I can say, being renewed. So that the dream and the word and the calling can, can come into fulfillment. Verse 20. Eventually eventually after 13 years from being sold 30 years old the king of egypt sent for him setting him free at last i want to tell to somebody you are so close for the king of kings to open a door in your life you've come through many things for the last couple of years you've tried but you find yourself empty you have you were in presence spiritually you just could not connect could not experience the fullness of god naturally you went through a lot of hardship you've been separated 
But I want to tell you today, there came a time that the king sent for him. Listen, God is sending an angel. God is sending forth a word calling you out because the season has ended. And listen what it says. Then Joseph was put in charge of everything under the king. He became the master of the palace over all, over all of the royal possessions. God, when God restores, he bring you in the authority. The highest authority is what's needed to fulfill the purposes that you've been tested for. The dream that was draw, that was already in your heart. The calling that not yet fulfilled. Verse 22. Pharaoh gave him authority over all the princes of the land. And Joseph became the teacher of wisdom to the king's advisors. What an amazing from prison to a teacher to kings. A teacher of wisdom. You see, but when you're imprisoned by the, by the Lord and you're obedient to what God is bringing you through, He will raise you up to speak with kings, with wisdom and teach them. I say, are you aware that God, the God we serve is still the same God that's this described in the life of Joseph, the same God that brought him into that imprisonment, preparing a man for the people and preparing, you know, allowing famine for his people to come to Egypt. I say there are seasons today when God will call for a famine and will destroy all provisions of bread. That could apply physically but also spiritually, a time when we seem to starving spiritually from lack of spiritual food. You see, many times we blame people. We blame the pastor. The word is so empty. We blame the church. There's no revival. There's no fire. But you're starving because you were imprisoned by God spiritually. But you've been tested. The word that God has given you. And how many of us miss the opportunity? We fail the test. I say God used the famine in Joseph's day. For his purposes. Even the things you are going through. God is doing it for his purposes. And he still stirs up spiritual hunger. By cutting off the channels of supply. For a season. And when Joseph was in that prison. It says his soul came into iron. My brother and sister. When you find yourself being imprisoned. Your soul. Came into iron. You feel like I just cannot. I don't know. You've tried. You're fasting. You're praying. You're trying to understand. But I think God meant it for good. Joseph's imprisonment wasn't simply physical in its dynamic, but he literally felt chained in his soul. These words depict great mental anguish. Understand the mental anguish you're going through. Being in prison, not seeing the word in your life being fulfilled. Waiting for years. But there's a season coming. When the king will send for you. Because you've been found. Uh, obedience and truthful. I said until the time that his word came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. What was this word of Joseph. That was being delayed in its fulfillment. Is the word he spoke. Based upon the dreams he received. My father and my mother and my brothers. Will bow before me. The dream Joseph had. He carried a dream, a word of God, from God in his heart. But while, he, while the manifestation of the word was delayed, the word tested him. It was the fire in the light answer of prayers. I mean when you pray and you hear nothing. And your answers or the prayers being delayed. It is not a nice place to be. I say, I wonder if Joseph ever regret telling his brothers about his dreams. Sometimes we so speak about the word God has given up. Oh, God has called me to the nations. And the next moment you find yourself imprisoned with lacking in many things. And you cannot understand. But God will always test his servants. Bring them to a place of obedience. Understanding who God truly is. Sending you out. Getting rid of all the me and the I. So that we can truly be servants of the Most High. But you know what? Joseph, Joseph had to blab out his dreams. 
Joseph's declaration of his dreams were an, an expression of faith. However, a confidence rose up in his soul and he just had to speak forth what he knew was from God. The same with us. But then the word was tested. The moment we receive the word, speak the word, can you imagine? I mean, during all, he would have probably remembered that dream, but he would not know how it will happen. How many times we find ourselves in a place that all our conditioned circumstances is completely the opposite of the, of the calling or, or the word that we carry in our heart we hear from God. Maybe Joseph feel I was deceived. Maybe God doesn't talk to me at all. But no, it had to be God. I'm prepared to bet my life on it. God spoke to me and I'll never let go of that. The fire on his life during the season must be incredible. Can you imagine me going through this? Not understanding. And the same with us. We're going through the same stuff. And God prepares you. For the season to uplift and send somebody and say, I call you by your name. It's your season. It's your time. It's now. I found you faithful and obedient when you were isolated. I say by the time God was finished with Joseph, he was entirely a different person. No longer this, you know, blah, 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 young, full of himself, young boy. But he saw everything different after his time being in prison. He had matured. Um, and you know what was strange? After he was called out and been placed in that place of, of um, authority. Do you know how much time before from that until Joseph saw his brothers coming in the time of famine? Because God declared a famine also because he knew that there need to be a time where he and his brothers and his family need to, 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 to reconnect it. You know how long did it take since he became in power until the time that his brothers first time come to the palace and he saw them? Nine years. Nine years. What you would have done if you been second in charge and your brother sold you 13 years you know, ago and now you've been placed in this authority? Wouldn't you send something to... To your brothers or your father said, I'm fine. Hello, Jeanette, my sister. Um, wouldn't you send something to your, you know, your family said, I'm fine. He waited. He matured. But they, they did come a time. Nine years before his brothers first time come to the palace and seeking, you know, a, a floor or weed. Because of the hunger and the famine that was there. I also want to say something prophetically regarding that. Maybe you have family not yet coming in, but God has brought you out. Don't be in a haste trying to change or to connect them to what God has done in your life. God is still busy with them. They also must come through a famine to understand the emptiness. But as Joseph was also like a savior to his family, Jesus is that savior for you and me when we come to him in our emptiness. Because many times it's the emptiness and the lacking that we can come before Him, before His throne of grace, and just say, we, we in famine, we really struggle. And, and, and Jesus, through what He done, bless us. Amen. But you see, after that all, Joseph could see God's purposes of all the years, all the things that happened. But he waited patiently for God to fulfill His purpose. And that's one of the biggest things. Are we really willing to wait for God until He opens the door, until He calls you? I say now Joseph has the authority to bind and to put in prison. He had this authority. Because he was once a prisoner, Joseph would now be able to judge righteously and pronounce righteousness judgment mixed with empathy. Because he came from that. Sometimes the imprisoned seasons that we come through becomes the foundation from the teaching and from the testimony that God will use you. Because you can relate, you can emphasize for somebody that went through this. Sometimes people try to find that in books by the teachings of people. And I say, there is things that we can learn, but sometimes they want the shortcut. But God's way is not 
the shortcut. God's way is the testing of obedience by famine, by prison, spiritually and naturally. Amen. I say it took a lot for Joseph to understand the value of his present season. When he was placed there, he could have been bettered. He could have used his position. But because of what he went through and could see the bigger plan of God, he could have that empathy through his family. Amen. I say wisdom is fruitful. I mean, God said you increased in knowledge and spoke to the kings and to the, you know, to the people within this kingdom. And I say one day Jesus spoke to the crowds Story that follow him saying, For John the Baptist came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. People will always judge you. People will always say something. But the Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a gluten and a wine bibber, a friend of tax collectors. Whenever you come in the power and authority, there will always be people, always be people that saying, Question. Why you sit and speak to the people you sit and amongst the people you are related to. I want to conclude this morning this word. And I just want to say to someone, if you find yourself in that, it's obedience. Once we come to the place that we've learned, matured, and God found us obedient that he said, I will send a man to open that door. I will send a man to calling you out. Now your word will come and manifest and you will come into that promise that God has given you. But you will have now the maturity. You will have now the understanding of God's purposes, not of your purpose anymore, but also you will have empathy for people that still are in their prison season, are still in their testing, in their word season. Sometimes we hear a prophetic word and we think tomorrow it must be fulfilled. It's not working like that. It's when God prepares you. But then until you find yourself being obedient and faithful, understanding the bigger purpose, you will send a man to say it's time to come out. And God will uplift you. So don't try to figure out why and why not. Just come into and allow God to mature you. Even you feel, God, where are you? But hold on to the word that's been prophesied, the calling over your life. Don't let go, because surely you did hear from God. Surely, don't let what the present season tell you that you're not good enough. Don't quit. You just keep on doing what you're doing, because the moment it will come that God will send for you. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. The word that's been spoken over your life. I would like to pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you today for a word of encouragement. I know that I know what it is to be in prison. I know, Lord, being in a foreign country, it's not easy. In a country where many people do not understand English. Far from family. Far from the cultural things we do. But yet, but yet, You've never left me. And I know there are people trying to figure out how come, why things happen. But one thing I can say, God, in this season, the revelation and things you've done in my life, maybe I would have never learned. I would have never been disobedient. I would have never experienced the revelation, knowledge, like I've experienced that now. But it took a prison. It took where my hands and I, my feet had to be in chains, my soul in iron, where I could not understand. And I know I'm speaking to people this morning, Lord, I pray that you will strengthen them in their prison season. If it's spiritual, Lord, strengthen them. Let them hold on to their word and the promises, what you've spoken over their lives. Even they do not understand. But I pray, Lord, you will uplift us. You will bring us into the place. There will come a time when the King of Kings will say, Call him by his name. Let him come forth. And Lord, with that authority and maturity, that you will lift us up. Bring us to a place 
where we understand, having empathy to other people. Father, I pray for everyone. May you strengthen them. May you uplift them. May you, Lord, also send word. It's time for them to come out. I pray that I... I pray that over everyone, Lord. I just say, we exalt you. We glorify you, Lord Jesus. Touch us today in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching. Share this with someone. I believe there are people finding themselves in so much things that they do not understand. It's like they've been chained. You know, it's like their soul is being imprisoned. But God is still there with you. Even you do not act on your prayers. You feel totally spiritual separated. But God's plan has not changed. But soon, very soon, a man will come and say, come up. A man will come and set you free. May God bless you. May God strengthen you. But may the message come soon. It's time to come out. Because God will uplift you. God will bring you into fullness. May God bless you. Thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. And just know one thing, Jesus loves you. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Amen.